Uh, ben Collins for 20 says, My moderately autistic brother has started a YouTube channel. Would mean the world to him if you'd review his cooking video. Less than 60 seconds. Uh, I have a feeling that this is a trick a Let's see. Oh, Patrick Tomlinson, your little brother. Okay. Let's see traditional ramen breakfast tea. Patrick Tomlinson here to show you how to make a quick and easy breakfast and lose all of your English and Asian friends at the same time. Step one, get some water boiling. Step two, drop some ramen in there. Oop, yeah, don't want that. Don't want that. Yeah, throw the flavor packet out. Won't need it. Step three, get a big cup and a nice strong breakfast tea. Step four, pour those noodles right in the teacup. There we go. Step five, allow it to seep for 45 minutes, stirring occasionally, add milk. And now you're ready to enjoy your traditional breakfast ramen tea. Oh my god, it's so bad. <laughs> don't, don't ever do this. No one ever do this. This is terrible. Is this actually his account? Is this really him? Is he really doing this? Five years ago? What? I thought he had resorted to trying and, uh, oh my god, this is where all those pictures of Patrick come from. It's from these videos on his old YouTube channel. Back when he still had some vigor. <gasps> There's a comedy special by Patrick Tomlinson from eight years ago. Do we dare? Do you guys want to listen to Patrick Tomlinson do comedy? I kind of feel like we should. Comedy club on state. Keep it going for Jake, everybody. An Aryan wet dream come to life. There he is. Just saying, if the Nazis had won World War II, he'd be on posters right now. That's all, that's all I'm saying. You know. Gay Nazi joke, okay. So, my name is Patrick Tomlinson. I'm really glad you all came out tonight. We drinking tonight, Madison? Yeah. Yes! Of course we are. We're Wisconsin. That's what we do. I, uh, I was driving down to Chicago a, a couple of days. I mean, I guess the re my only frame of reference for Wisconsin is Red Letter Media. So I, I, they do drink. <laughs> I, have no, I have no refutation of this. And if you haven't been there for a little bit, they have these big electronic billboards over the highways now that, uh, that display these messages like, Oh, 573 deaths on Illinois highways. I'm like, oh, good, they're keeping score. Uh, I hope they beat the high score. I really, I'm really pulling for those guys down there, you know. Uh, I mean, the joke, like, doesn't, I don't know, it kind of falls flat because it's like, yeah, the Department of Highway S Safety <laughs> does keep track of deaths. Like, that's their job. Illinois sympathizers in here? <laughs> Jeez. Oof, he's already, he's already, like, bantering with the chat, or not the chat. What do you call a, a chat, but in a real-life chat? Is that an audience? I think you, do you refer to them as the audience or the chat? Well, he's yelling at the chat for not laughing at his jokes already. Uh, that's, uh, that's not a good sign. I don't know, but driving in Wisconsin is just a, it's just a different animal. Like, I drive all over the country for this stuff. I do this, I'm, a, I'm an author, I go around to cons and stuff. And uh, in Wisconsin, you, you see things you don't see everywhere else. Like in any other state, you may not know this, but the billboards that like Mothers Against Drunk Driving pull up, they say, or put up, I mean, they say, uh, make sure to use a designated driver. Well, ah, we got somebody leaving. <laughs> Our billboards say, make sure to designate a sober driver. Because you all kind of lost the thread on what a designated driver was, apparently. Is this entire set about, like, drunk driving and people dying on the highways? Is, 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 that, is that what he finds funny? Every morning, Patrick Tomlinson wakes up. He skips past the funnies in the newspaper and goes straight to the obituaries and starts reading, 45 died, uh, leaves behind wife and children, hit by a drunk driver, and just like, ah! Ah, fuck you, bitch. You don't designate a driver based on one, which one of your drunk friends hasn't had his first DUI yet. That's not <laughs> actually how you're supposed to do it. Hey, who doesn't currently have an interlock device on their car? <laughs> Gary, you're up. <laughs> not supposed to do it like that, apparently. <laughs> and it just, 
Uh, like because there's there's that whole thing that the uh, the Department of Transportation is putting out. It's like zero in Wisconsin. It's like you know zero deaths on Wisconsin roadways. It's something we can all live with. That's the slogan. Like I don't want to be the guy whose job it is to make that become a reality. I would set way more realistic goals. I'd be like, hey, Wisconsin, maybe don't shake dice for shots tonight. Like, maybe <laughs> just fucking calm down, you animals. Nobody else does that. I can't believe... I'm actually really surprised that his entire thing so far is just like, our roads are really unsafe because of drunk drivers, and they're trying to change that, the fools. <laughs> you know, anywhere in the country. So... Who here is in a relationship, everybody? No, this is definitely the worst stand-up I've ever seen is a lost media clip. There is a, I've talked about this before years ago, but there are, there are multiple A-log stand-up videos. Um, the one that's still around is not the, the worst one. There is an even worse a Anthony Legato stand-up video where he for real, like in 2009 or whatever, ask a live audience of normies at a stand-up club if anyone has ever heard of Chris Chan. Like, even today, that would be awful. Just the worst fucking thing I can imagine. But at that time, it's, like, unthinkable that this retard Spurg has so little theory of mind that he doesn't realize that spending an inordinate amount of time stalking Chris Chan on the internet is, like, not something that any normie understands. Uh, that's the the worst stand -up. And there's, like, legit, like, people leaving, and he's, like, asking people live why they're leaving, like, in the middle of this video. And honestly, nobody's been able to find this, despite I've talked about it for years. It might be a hallucination. I Honestly, I can't tell if this is something that I made up and is like a figment of my imagination, or if this is like a real thing that once existed. Who here has been in a bad relationship? <laughs> the rest of you, good, okay. <laughs> Who here learned after the bad relationship to prioritize what's in the inside over physical beauty? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got one. One ugly table in the back. That's, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm sure you've all got great personalities. Uh, His entire, a lot of his set involves like ribbing the audience, the the chat, and that's kind of risky if you're Patrick right, Thomas. You gotta go with physical beauty because you you know what you're getting. It's right there. There's no way to fool it. You know what's on the inside can screw you up years later. Let's give an example. Like physical beauty is never gonna do you like this. You're never gonna be waiting outside of a Coles changing room for your wife, and she comes out and she's like, "Honey, do these do these yoga pants make my ass look uh, like it's gonna leave you after nine years for no apparent reason?" <laughs> and then emotionally manipulate you into giving up the rights to the child that's growing in her womb even now? Um, that happened. <laughs> There's no love. <laughs> that's something yoga pants do? Oh, well, they're on sale. We have enough Kohl's cash, so we're getting these. Oh, <laughs> I guess we are. Uh, so I'm divorced. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's actually funny. <laughs> like the entire thing before that's not funny, but I'm just saying like yeah, I'm divorced after the fact is like, <laughs> it's really funny. I hate that woman. I just just hate her. Uh and I don't like the way we use the, we abuse the word hate these days. Uh, we we use it we overuse it. To, to that's that's overkill. Like like okay, even you're self it's one thing when you're self-deprecating, you're like yeah, I'm divorced and I've had issues. Like that that's funny, but when you start like actually seething about like he actually did a funny joke and then he like I think he's mental mentally he can't handle just self deprecating, so now he's like going to explain how much he hates his ex wife and it's like, um buddy, we're not therapy. It has no meaning. Uh like just the other day I was I was in line behind a you know, behind a young lady in a Starbucks, uh and the barista asked her, uh, would you like a shot of peppermint in your frappa mocha chino or whatever the fuck it was? And she's like, oh, God, no, I just, I just hate, I hate peppermint. I just hate peppermint. I'm like, really? You hate peppermint? Did peppermint leave you so three months later it could marry your friend Spearmint? Is that something that <laughs> happened to you? That also happened. That's a real story. Prevented you from seeing your little candy cane for the last year and a half? Is that going on in your life? 
Oh, that's that's awkward. I know that happened to him. There's a picture of his wife with his best friend, at like a Christmas at a Christmas club or something. That's extremely awkward. Did you spend an entire week wrestling with whether or not killing peppermint was going to be worth the jail time? Is that <laughs> something that's no? Well, you don't hate peppermint. It's just not your thing. Thank you, everybody. My name is Patrick Tomlinson. <laughs> Woo! Tomlinson, next to the stage, number eight, if you're following along, Nick Lynn. Oh, I'm glad that he found a, a healthy outlet for his frustrations instead of taking an axe and butchering his wife and child. <laughs> cool. Excellent. That was a nice detour. Uh, happy to hear that your mildly autistic brother is doing well, Ben Collins. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!